In this section, we will talk about physical layer and network layer of the software defined access. So at the bottom, we naturally have the physical layer. So this layer includes enterprise network devices and the various router, switch and wireless platforms, their operating systems and the interfaces and links that connect them. It also includes server appliances, their operating systems and the interfaces and links that connect them to network devices also. The important part of this layer is how the physical, lay physical hardware and software provides specific capabilities that enable the overall SD access solution. For example, uh, all of the supported network devices require the ability to process spatial frame encapsulations, maintain specific protocols and tables, and provide programmable APIs and offer other capabilities necessary to support the network layer. So running on top of the physical layer is the network layer. This layer can be further divided into two subcategories as you can see in here. The first category is fabric overlay and the second one is the network underlay. Network underlay contains the settings, protocols and tables as well as stacking or device virtualization techniques for the physical devices that provide a transport layer. And when it comes to the fabric overlay, this one contains the settings, forwarding and policy protocols and tables for the devices that provide a logical services layer. So uh, the network underlay should be designed for maximum simplicity and resiliency, guys. This includes all standard physical layer best practices for hardware redundancy, multiple data paths, etc. as well as the standard network layer best practices for protocol redundancy, timers, control plane protection, and etc. Two modules of network underlay are supported and they are custom underlay and automated underlay. When it comes to custom underlay, either an existing network or a network configured and managed manually without the use of Cisco DNA Center, that's the custom underlay. When it comes to the automated underlay, that is a new fully automated network underlay whereby all aspects of the network are configured and managed by Cisco DNA Center. In custom underlay, the user must provide all of the physical and logical interface address configurations as well as all of the control plane protocols and address configurations to provide full IP reachability between fabric enabled network devices and Cisco DNA Center and Cisco IS, ISE I mean. The main advantages are that you are already familiar with your own environment. I mean the interfaces, uh, IP addresses, protocols and etc. And are permitted to customize the operating behavior to fit your requirements. Another key advantage is that the fabric overlay is capable of running over the top of a legacy or non-Cisco IP network. When it comes to the disadvantage, the main disadvantages are that you are responsible for all configuration and management requirements and any problems may affect the operation of the fabric overlay. Some examples of custom underlay problems include improper IP addressing and or routing, MTU size and fragmentation issues, excessive latency and round trip time. 
So in an uh, automated underlay, Cisco DNA Center this time manages the provisioning of all of the physical and logical interface address configurations as well as all of the control plane protocols and address configurations to provide full IP reachability between all fabric enabled network devices and Cisco DNA Center and Cisco ISE. In this case, the main advantage guys are that you need only provide the necessary IP addresses to allow IP reachability to the external network. All other aspects of the network underlay are fully automated, including the configurations across the multiple network layers. This really eliminates the misconfigurations and reduces the complexity of the network underlay. It also greatly simplifies and speeds the building of the network underlay. So let's talk about what is the disadvantage of this method. The automated underlays disadvantages are that you are no longer able to provide any customization the network underlay is built to meet a standard compliance design to maximize operations. Also, the automated underlay tool does require that one seed device to be configured manually to start from which all others will be automated. The fabric overlay provides the infrastructure for building virtual networks with policy-based segmentation constructs as well as providing dynamic host services for mobility and enhanced security beyond the normal switching and routing capabilities. The fabric overlay will be fully automated regardless of the network underlay model used. This includes all necessary overlay control plane protocols and addressing as well as all global configurations associated with the operation of the SD access fabric. There are three basic planes of operation in fabric overlay and they are control plane, data plane and the policy plane. Control plane contains the settings protocols and tables for the fabric enabled devices that provide the logical forwarding constructs of the fabric overlay. Uh, when it comes to data plane that is a specialized IP and UDP based frame encapsulation that contains the forwarding and policy constructs for the fabric overlay and policy plane that contains the settings protocols and table for the fabric enabled devices that provide the policy constructs over the fabric overlay. So the primary technology uh, used for the fabric control plane is based on locator ID separation protocol which is LISP. LISP is an IETF standard protocol and that is based on a simple endpoint ID which is known as EID to routing locator mapping system to separate the identity from its current locations. LISP dramatically simplifies traditional routing environments by removing the need for each router to process every possible IP destination address and route. It does this by moving remote destination information to a centralized map database that allows each router to manage only its local routes. This technology provides Main, many advantages for Cisco SD access such as less CPU usage, smaller routing tables, dynamic host mobility and etc. So the primary technology used for fabric data plane is based on VXLAN. 
Wakeslan is an IETF standard encapsulation, guys, and Wakeslan encapsulation is IPUDP based, meaning that it can be forwarded by any IP based network and effectively creates the overlay aspect of the SD access fabric. Wakeslan encapsulation is used for two main reasons. Wakeslan includes the source layer 2 header and it also provides special fields for additional information such as virtual network VN ID and group segment ID. This technology provides several advantages for SD access such as support for both layer 2 and layer 3 virtual topologies, I mean the overlays, and the ability to operate over any IP-based network with built-in network segmentation and built-in group-based policy. In software-defined access, some enhancements to the original Wakeslan specifications have been added and most notably the use of security group tags. This new Wakeslan format is currently an IETF draft known as group policy option. So the primary technology used for the fabric policy plane is used is based on Cisco Trust Sec. Cisco Trust Sec and specifically SGT and SGT Exchange protocol is an IETF draft protocol that provides logical group based policy creation and enforcement by separating the actual endpoint identity from its actual network address using a new ID known as a scalable group tag. An SGT is a Unix 16-bit ID tag and separate from the network address. This allows you, the user to create network policies based solely on the SGT regardless of the actual location. Also, when SGTs and VNs are combined together, we can create a two-level hierarchical policy module. SGTs allow you to create differ different level of network-based VN IDs and group-based SGT IDs segmentation. This technology provides several advantages of, for Cisco SD access such as support for both network-based and group-based segmentations. So the operation of the fabric overlay requires several different device roles, each with a specific set of responsibilities. Each fabric-enabled network device must be configured for one of these roles. During the planning and design process, it is important to understand the fabric roles and to select the most appropriate network device for each role. There are four basic device roles in the fabric overlay and they are the control plane node, fabric border node, fabric edge node and the fabric wireless LAN controller. Control plane node contains the settings protocols and tables to provide the endpoint to location mapping system for the fabric overlay. Fabric border node contains the settings, protocols and tables to provide internal and the external routing between the fabric overlay and the outside networks. Fabric edge node contains the setting protocols and the settings to provide wired endpoints onboarding and host mobility for the fabric overlay. Fabric wireless LAN controller contains the settings protocols and tables to provide this time wireless surely endpoint onboarding and host mobility for the fabric overlay. So to understand the benefits and operation of Cisco software defined access you must be aware of several important concepts. As noted earlier, the software-defined access fabric is based on multiple existing technologies which you may already be familiar with, but it is important to understand 
how they operate and interact in software defined access. So there are three basic constructs in the fabric overlay and they are the virtual network VN, scalable group and the host pool. A virtual network is a separate routing and switching table instance to isolate host pools. It is based on VRF with the same basic purpose and rules as in traditional networks. Software defined access assigns every endpoint to a virtual network. Communication between endpoints in different VNs must traverse a firewall and VRF router. Software defined access also provides Lisp VN extranet for remote location resolution across VNs. Assignment to a VN is based on the associated host pool. The same VN is configured on all fabric edge and the border nodes. The control plane node uses instance IDs to maintain separate VRF tables. EID prefixes are then registered within a VN. If VN extranet is used, it adds the VN ID to EID location mapping. The fabric edge and the border nodes include the VN ID in each VXLAN header, which is then carried across the fabric. This keeps each VN separate and allows VRF based routing and firewall policy and enforcement. Fabric border nodes use standard VRF definition with route distinguisher and route target configurations for remote VRF advertisement. So when it comes to a scalable group, a scalable group is a logical object to group similar endpoints. It is based on an SGT with the same basic purpose and rules as in traditional networks. Cisco SD access uh, assigns every endpoint to scalable group. Assignment to a scalable group can be either static or via dynamic authentication. The same scalable group is configured on all fabric edge and the border nodes and groups can be defined in Cisco DNA Center and or uh, Cisco ISE and are advertised via Cisco Trust Sec. There is a direct one-to-one -one relationship between host pools and scalable groups. So the scalable groups operate within a VN by default. So a host pool provides onboarding and IP address services to endpoints. It is based on an uh, SVI with Anycast gateway with the same purpose and rules as in traditional networks. Cisco software defined access assigns every endpoint to a host pool. Host IP addresses can be static or provided via DHCP. Assignment to a host pool can be either static or via dynamic authentication. The same Anycast IP is configured on all fabric edge nodes and the SVI is also enabled for Lisp dynamic EIDs to register host specific addresses and their associated VN to the control plane. Cisco Software Defined Access provides a new DHCP relay capability to support VRF based IP scopes without modifying the DHCP servers. Fabric Edge nodes relay DHCP requests to the fabric border and the border stores the Edge node to return DHCP offers to requesting host. 